Welcome to EDLD 5304. I'm Dr. Dwayne Hrabnick and I'm the lead instructor for this course. I'll be using short introductory videos to give you a context for what you will learn uh, in the course and in each module and also to introduce you to the key module concepts. I've spent the last 20 plus years working within educational organizations at a variety of levels, from a teaching assistant to being a VP academic. And I've learned that organizational change is one of the most challenging things that we can ever take on. It is so challenging because we are asking people to change their behaviors. And if you've ever broken a New Year's resolution, you know just how difficult that can be at the personal level. But when you combine a group of people together, all these individuals who find it difficult to change into a group, then you can understand just how challenging it can be to change an organization's culture. I want to share an experience that I had a few years back that will demonstrate just how important it is to consider more than just a rational argument for change. I was a new VP academic of a small liberal arts university, and like most small organizations, we were facing severe budget constraints. And I saw an opportunity to save hundreds of thousands of dollars on institutional printing costs and provide a much higher level of printing functionality for faculty, staff, and students. One of the biggest water cooler complaints were the problems with the reliable printing in the institution, so I thought this would be a simple task. I asked the faculty and the staff to hold off on any purchases of new printers and supplies until we could explore an institutional-wide approach to centralized printing and move towards digital document management as well. I opened up the exploration process to faculty and staff and ensured that the whole process was as transparent as possible. At a town hall meeting where we presented the selection committee's uh, results, what we believed was the best option by consolidating our printing to several strategically located high volume full color printers and other smaller high volume work group full color printers placed in key areas of the institution, we could reduce our annual printing costs by a quarter of a million dollars and have fully supported reliable full color printing, high volume digital scanning with OCR and electronic document management and storage. The only change was that people would no longer have a personal printer on their desk. This was actually a very significant change because I found out most faculty and staff had a printer on their desk. Actually, there was just under a one-to-one -one ratio of printers to faculty and staff. Some staff had more than one printers attached to their computers. I was shocked at the resistance and anger that followed the presentation. We were offering full color printing, solving the annoying institutional printing reliability issues, offering so many more options and features, and the only change was that people would have to get up and walk 15, maybe 20 feet, to the nearest printing station. Considering the research on the detrimental effects of sitting at our desks, even this small change that we were asking people to make seemed to be rational. It seemed to make sense. The resistance to the move to digital document management and digitization of the institution also surfaced and people speculated on how much more they would be asked to change. I initially thought that this was such a small and simple change to make that I didn't apply any organizational change thinking to this process. <laughs> I'll never make that mistake again. And I hope that you can learn from my experience. If you really want to bring about organizational change, then you need to focus on the people first and then appeal to their hearts, not just their heads. The sharing of more information or engaging in more rational discourse on its own doesn't appear to help people make significant change, but appeal to values, attitudes, feelings, can first motivate people toward making change, to appeal to the heart. In this course, you'll learn how important it is to start with a well-defined why, or appeal to the heart, then address the key behaviors that will influence change, and build a solid execution strategy as you learn to become a leader who can address the inevitable resistance to change that will occur when launching innovative digital learning initiatives. You will note that there is no textbook for the course. 
but we will be using some of the best ideas from a wide assortment of thought leaders. Over the years, I've found that no single author or authors have all the answers when it comes to organizational change. You need to take the best ideas that are available and assemble them into a systematic approach that will help you move your organization forward. You'll be asked to read all or portions of three books. So while the reading requirement is relatively heavy in this course, you'll find that you will keep going back to those books on a regular basis as you work to bring change into your organization. You will also note there are no make work projects or assignments in this course. All the assignments are related to your organization and the changes you need to bring about. As you work through this course, you'll have the opportunity to apply what you learned directly to your own organization. You also should be able to build on the disruptive innovation change plans that you started back in 5305. Please learn from my experience. Change doesn't come easy for most organizations. So even the smallest change needs to be thoroughly planned. Also keep in mind, the head won't go where the heart hasn't been.